From deep inside the Death Star, I'm Larry Larson. And I'm Chad Beter. Who are you? <laughs> hey, what, you know? Well, uh, Andrew's cover, out. Andrew's out. He's, uh, he's out doing a little um, kernel debugging training out yeah. in uh, Beantown, out in Boston. Nice. So I'm in here uh, covering uh, covering the, the home base for him. And what people may not know is that uh, you're one of the people behind Defrag Tools who uh, helps us put together stuff and uh, what we're going to talk about and uh, uh, research and yeah, it's just all over the place. Yeah, so Andrew and I work on the same team and uh, and uh, so I've been kind of. Uh, in the behind the scenes kind of thing on the last few episodes. And, well, you're uh, in so front of the scenes I'm today. in front of the scenes today. So what are we going to so, talk about today? Well, I'm going to cover a couple of different tools. Uh, I'm going to start with an inbox tool actually called MS Config. Um, and then I'm going to go to the more power user version of that uh, from Sys Internals called uh, Auto Run. Cool. Uh, but before I uh, kind of start talking about MS Config, I want to kind of give a little bit of uh, a backstory, a little history of uh, a little Microsoft history from back at the dawn of the internet age when uh, dial-up modems were all Sounds the like rage. Sounds like Windows 95 days. Windows 95. Computers were big and beige. Yeah. And uh, the, the hallowed halls of Microsoft echoed with the sounds of, uh, let's say, Weezer. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, back in those days, uh, Microsoft uh, product support would get a lot of, of support calls uh, from people who, you know, installed various software on their pretty swanky Windows 95 machine. It wasn't running so hot, and, you know, what do I do? I'll call Microsoft. And um, so I've actually got a little uh, wow. Windows 95. Uh, this is actually Microsoft Bob. Not sure if you remember this. Wow, that is rolling That's it back. Old rolling school. it back. Yeah, going. So uh, you know, let's say you got your Windows 95 machine. I'm going to go ahead and get out of Bob. That here. fire must be what two, three frames per second. It's been running for a long time there, and it's just still burning. It's keeping me warm. And this dog here is kind of the uh, the uh, ancestor of Clippy, if you nice, remember yeah. Clippy. Let's uh, exit out of Bob here. I don't think anyone will let us forget Clippy. Clippy is uh, infamous. That's right. So this is a very familiar look for old people like me. <laughs> That's right. To, uh... Yeah, you and me both uh, <laughs> back in the day. Uh, so... Uh, We'd get customers calling up all the time in Windows 95, and it was pretty terrible because, you know, they'd install stuff, it would start up, uh, it'd load drivers, it, all this kind of stuff, and it was about the only tools we had back then. We all then. had our, our RAM doublers running. RAM and... doubler, you'd install RAM doubler, and next thing you know, your <laughs> machine runs like half as fast. Yeah. You're like, I, I doubled this my was, RAM. I what doubled happened? my RAM. What happened? I, I better call Microsoft. I installed AOL. I don't know what's going on. And so people would call up, and uh, about the best thing that the uh, the support people at Microsoft could do, whoops, if I type it right here, is run this program called SysEdit, which is kind of like a glorified notepad. Yeah. And um, it's you'd have your autoexec.bat, your config system. You can imagine if you're a support uh, professional at Microsoft trying I, to walk someone through this. I was a this. support professional at this point. There and you I go. remember trying to walk some noob through this. That's exactly it. it. great times. Because yeah. now that you've hidden the one that you need them to go to. Now you can't yeah. find it. And now it's like, okay, I need you to scroll down to the line that says load equals or run. And let's look at your drivers here. What do you have? It's pretty bad, right? Yeah. So right around this time, uh, you know, Windows 95 was all the rage. They were starting to work on Windows 98. And some of the folks uh, in product support were actually over uh, in the Redmond campus kind of working on the Windows 98 project with the, uh, the product team. And they were like, you know, I think we can do better. This is, you know, glorified notepad. And, uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice if we had an easier way to sort of clean boot somebody's system if they got into trouble. And uh, so uh, I heard this story actually firsthand from uh, one of the people who was on that team named Janet Harris. And uh, what she was telling me is they actually uh, kind of, group of them were uh, kind of hanging out at a pub after work, talking about how bad this was and can't we do better. And they started brainstorming and uh, 
started uh, with a bar napkin here, as as all great things are, are. Every good idea started on a bar napkin. Every good idea started on a bar napkin, and this is that napkin. A and this is why I keep the, a stack of bar actual. napkins in my office in case <laughs> I can come up with a good idea. Exactly. You know, it's better than uh, any anything else. You know, the uh, low tech is the best sometimes, and and probably beer was involved too. Yeah. So. Uh, so, as you can see, they kind of sketched out, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we had some check boxes here, your auto exec bat, config sys, you could turn off all the third party stuff, go back to sort of a clean setup here. They uh, kind of sketched out these other tabs. And, uh, so and this, this should be in the Microsoft Archive. I know. I, I think it should be. And you can see that uh, Janet actually uh, had it framed there. And has not and dusted has since. Apparently not <laughs> dusted it since. But uh, it, it is kind of a little piece of Microsoft history. Nice. And uh, it's, it's a pretty cool story. So this became MS Config. They sold this to the Windows development team, and uh, they got a, a, a developer assigned who some a lot of people have actually heard of. His name's Raymond Chen. One of I the, have heard of him. I believe you've yeah. heard of him. He, he writes a blog called nice. The Old New Thing uh, up on Microsoft.com. And... Uh, he was the original developer for, for uh, Windows 98 MS Config. Nice. And it just so happens I also have a Windows 98 uh, VM here. Let's go ahead and bring that up. I better uh, wake it up. And uh, so this was what they actually came up with. MS Config. Oh, I missed this. that bar on the right. Yeah, the channel bar. Old school. And as you can see, looks very much like the uh, like the bar napkin. It does, yeah. So they had your diagnostic startup, your selective startup. And we'll go into this a little bit more because this is essentially still in Windows 7 and, and even uh, in Windows 8. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a whole lot in here. One of the interesting things uh, here was they, they had this advanced thing, and you had some really crazy uh, options here you could select to, to help troubleshoot your system. So Windows 7... It's still, you know, kind of the same thing. Still kind of the it's same thing. It's still a window. Now it's tabs instead of the floating windows, but... Yeah, it's it essentially... Let's go ahead and pull up uh, in my Windows uh, 7 here. We've still got MS Config. And hasn't changed a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually um, still a really good tool to use if you get into trouble. Uh, mm -hmm. Your machine's booting up slow. You're not sure what's going on. You can come in here. I just want to know what's what's firing up when I turn on my computer. Yeah. Why do all these things come up? Uh, you know, why, is, why do I get this thing asking me to update some software? Where's that coming from? Um, and so you can come on uh, in here to MS Config. You've got your normal startup. You can choose diagnostic startup, which is sort of like a pseudo safe mode, uh, where basically we turn off pretty much everything that you can in here. Um, so that's a good way if you're just really machines just dragging, yeah, not booting. Come in here. You can start with that. The real power is in selective startup, and what that will actually uh, allow you to do is come in here and be a little more granular. Uh, you can uh, choose services, and I believe they're all unchecked here because I chose diagnostic. But you can come in here and, and turn things on individually, turn things off individually, and kind of narrow down through sort of trial and error yeah. if, if something's running slow. So, um, and you can see here um, various services, uh, startup items I've got. I've got a few Intel things for my, you know, video driver. It's, you know, loads things down into the system tray here. Mm -hmm. uh, Adobe Reader, uh, Acrobat Manager. Was, you know, you'd be amazed how many apps you install that throw things in the startup. Yeah. And a lot of times people say, hey, I've had my machine a couple of years now. It kind of boots up slow. How come? Well, it's good can, first place to start. Good place to start. Um, in the tools uh, section here, there's uh, also some quick links to sort of some other tools that you can get to other places as well, but these are kind of a handy way to get to. If you wanted to pull up Task Manager, you can do so. Now, look at that. I loaded up Task Manager, and what came up instead? Process Explorer, and that is actually because 
earlier uh, in uh, one of the previous episodes, uh, Andrew was showing off Process Explorer, and there was a checkbox where uh, you can uh, replace Task Manager with Process Explorer, and you can see yeah. that's checked. So, and we'll actually get into that a little bit later. Um, 